Greetings, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's having a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. I'm going to hop on and talk about origins today. And uh, we're going to wait and give some people time to get on. And in the meantime, I've got to double check to see if I'm even on. Because I'm having signal issues with internet. And it looks like we are on. And so I'm going to give it a few minutes. Hopefully uh, people will share this because I think it's a very important video. How you doing, Mike? Anybody else? Um, I don't know. What do you think about Origins, Mike? Let's start this out with you. I've uh, got some interesting information that many people are aware of, but somehow they either don't do the research, um, do the gathering of the information, recording of the information, reporting of the information, teaching of the information, whatever. And uh, I think the video I'm ready to do here is very important in regards to that, no matter who you are. I don't care what religion or political or educational background you've got. I don't care what your finances are. I don't care if you're one of the top wigs. I don't care if you're one of the top wigs in the law system, the legal system, the financial system. I don't care. But we all came from the same origin, so this is pertinent to all of you, no matter what your views are. I don't care if you think uh, I'm your enemy or your brother. I don't care if whether you believe I'm, whether you believe I believe you're my enemy or your brother. I believe you're all my brothers and sisters, and I don't care whether you want to act as my enemy or not. I'm going to try to get you to act as my brother and sister. So, please, um, hit that share button. Get this out to as many people as you can. Um, because, again, I, I'm trying to import the uh, importance. I'm trying to export my importance to you. Because we are, as I believe, brothers and sisters in all kind. So, anyway, um, please feel free to say hi to everybody on the board and let's start a little conversation here while we wait uh, for people to come on. Good afternoon, Savannah, Russell, Lisa, Justin, everybody, all my brothers and sisters. Um, in this in these current times of discord I'll call it a lot of people ask where do I start well the problem is you've already started and in in my opinion, the reality is you have to realize um, where you're at, what you are, and what you're doing in order to correct things. Because most of us are conducting ourselves in an improper manner. Hi, Doug. Hi, Jody. And um, everybody else, of course. So let's get started. Our origins, as everybody knows, or is aware of, or has been apprised of through their education, supposedly comes from a written word. So, the written word that I use the most is the King James Version of the Bible and that is because every court every international court and every court extending down 
from those nations that use that international court derived from the uh, King James Version of the Bible. Um, that's generally how they operate the court system. Despite whether you operate on the Torah, the Quran, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever, they reference everything to the King James Version of the Bible. And when we look at things like other Bibles, such as the Quran, the Torah, um, all those other teachings, everything is pretty much uniform. The disillusion comes from the written word within the different contexts. So, and here I'm going to talk about those other readings or writings, um, the Torah, the Quran, and specifically in regards to the King James Version of the Bible, they have modern versions. This one here we see is the Holy Bible, and at the bottom you see HCSB, and that just simply stands for Holman Christian Standard Bible. The Holman Christian Standard Bible is just simply a modern English Bible that has been transliterated from the Kinglish, or the Kinglish, the King James Version of the Bible, um, indirectly or directly. I'm not sure, I'm not concerned about its lineage, other than the fact that it came after the King James Version of the Bible. And the wording in it has been changed. The next one, this is a modern King James Version. And though it is almost the same as the uh, actual King James Version 1611, there are some discrepancies. And before we go any further, in this particular one, I don't have any other version of the King James Version of the Bible yet. But I do have a lovely friend, great brother and kind from across the pond, who's sending a King James Version 1611 with the definition section. So I, I give a shout out to him. Great love, brother. It, it's going to go uh, with my collection and will be the highest, the highest prize um, that has ever been awarded to myself and so with that let me read this in this particular one is Genesis 2 21 and this is part of the um, original trust original trust and it's verse 3 or excuse me um, excuse me this is Genesis 3 um, verse 7 this is right after that original trust. My apologies. Verse 7, it says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. When we join in with another man or woman, the eyes of them both they have to see the same thing. So if you see sin, and the other one sees sin, it's in the eyes of both. If they see sin, and you don't, it's not in the eyes of both. He is the naked one. And you all, all you have to do is expose him. It is the king without clothing. You all remember that story. That's what this is talking. That's what that is talking about. That is uniform with the king. Who wears no clothes? Okay? Comprehend that. And um, now we'll get on to the rest of it. I do have what's called the New Testament in four versions. And the four versions are the King James, the Revised Standard, Philip's Modern English, and then the New English. So this one book, I can go through the King James Version um, Condensed. These are all kind of condensed. It is not, again, the exact same as the King James Version of the Bible, the original 1611. 
but it gives you a good sense of the comparisons between the four different versions. And like I said, if you use even this one or this one, you will see the definitive differences. So those are the three concurrent Bibles that I have in possession, along with the one that I told you I have coming. And again, great love, brother, great love to Andy Wordsmith, S-M-I-F-F. If you enter in your uh, search bar up there and look up S-M-I-F-F, you will likely find him. Great brother from across the pond, and uh, very much of like kind with my heart, mind, and soul. So, if you like me, check him out too. The next one, the next book I have is not a uh, biblical book. But the man who wrote it, I'm sure has done great, a uh, much, uh, much greater, more extensive research than I have. And I look up to him greatly. He is a great author. He has a great way of um, forwarding his views and opinions. And let me let me do it this way. Let me turn this camera around and we're going to show you this way. Because I have a series of books. And this one here is the number one New York best to uh, Times bestseller, The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. Notice it says A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. It doesn't name any particular Bible or anything like that. You know, it's spiritual. So it is uniform with all the other spiritual writing. And it's by Eckhart Tolle, and I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. The next book, in regards to the different versions of the Bible and the interpretations, the transliterations, how he um, has expressed his interpretations through his spiritual research of all these different sources, is How Language Works by David Crystal. And notice it says down be down below how babies babble words change meaning and languages live or die. He's author of the stories of English. These are both good books to read, the stories of English and how language works. I do not have his stories of English, but I highly recommend this one as well. Great reading. Okay? Now, the next two books <coughs> are very, very interesting. <coughs> and, and many of you have heard me talk about this one. Hans P. Guth, Concise English Handbook, 4th edition. This will help you comprehend what this guy is talking about in this the stories of English, the co uh, the uh, comprehensive um, construction of how we are supposed to speak, as well as write. Okay. Davy. Hyphen. Ellen. Chabner. Notice there's not a full colon stop. He tried to comprehend it as best he could, but evidently he didn't use this as an origin of source. Otherwise, he'd have had that full colon stop there. Now, this one is a medical language instant translator. We open it up. Blank on this side, medical language, instant translator. Blank page. Davy, Ellen, Chabner, comma, B A M A T. Medical language, instant translator. Elsevier Saunders, fifth edition. Goes on to tell you about Elsevier Saunders. ISBN. 
Medical Language Instant Translator 5th Edition. What is that ISBN? We're going to take a look at that when I'm done here. But he's got it copyrighted from 2001. And then he copyright wrote it in 2004, 2007, 2011, 2014. Those are the different uh, editions. So the 5th edition is copyright 2014. Then it goes on and gives him notices and everything. ISBN, and it gives you all that information. Working to grow, or working together to grow libraries in developing countries. Guess what, folks? If this is being used in America, does that mean America is a developing country? Uh-huh. Okay. Now the next important, the very, the most important part, and I'm going to switch back here because this is going to be hard for you guys to follow along as my hand is shaking and you can't read it anyway. So I'm going to read it for you and I'm hoping you can catch on. It says the medical language incident translator provides Quick access to useful, medically related information for both laypersons, information, laypersons, and students entering health-related professions. When you profess something, is it the truth or a lie? Today, we are increasingly exposed to medical terminology. Medical terminology. Whether it be at the doctor's office, the physician's office. They call themselves doctors, but in fact they are physicians. On the internet or in the media. Analyzing and understanding these terms allows us to participate, partake, a partiality of what's owed. Of what's whole. Participate in important issues. Importance. Affecting our society. As well as to make better decisions about our own health. Using this handy book. You will be able to do the following. Decipher. Oh, oh, decipher. Decipher what? A code? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Complicated medical terms. Decipher medical codes by recognizing and finding the meanings of individual word parts. Distinguish between commonly misunderstood medical terms. Recognize specialized terms used in medical records. Access information on medical abbreviations, symbols, acronyms, and professional designations. D. Signations. The American nation is still being developed and they are asking you to design. Design. They are asking for your help in the designing of the developing American nation. And as long as you keep importing all of your information to help them design it under their code, you're becoming subject to that code. Comprehend this. Quit volunteering that information because it is, in fact, accepting their offer. Look up to uh, UCC 2-206 Offer and acceptance in formation of contract. And you will see that the word in is separated from the term formation. And that the term formation is capitalized. And it is distinctly different from the one term we know as information. So we go on into the very... Um, Thing that says how to analyze medical terms 
and it breaks that down the roots, suffixes, combining, and everything. And when I get done here, I'm going to post a picture of this. But first, I'm going to read it for you. It's not very long. The root is the foundation of the word. The root is the found. Where did you find the word? Did you find it in one of these? A book? Or did you find it here? And then write your own book. In the now time. According to your interpretation. When you guys hopefully... I hope... I've been led correctly. I hope my heart is telling me correct. And I hope I have conveyed it correctly. I hope this claim will free five American nationals and assert my claim of freedom as well. And I'll explain this one later. When it's compiled and whether it be a non-disclosure agreement or it actually becomes published. For now, it's, this is just a rough draft. It's going to another brother of mine across the country to hold in escrow for his review while I go through and correct the errors on this one. That way I have an original draft I can always refer to in somebody else's custody. So let me finish up here. The root is the foundation of the word. All medical terms have one or more roots. Isn't that like serving two masters? Isn't that like serving more than one master? So, for example, the root of hemat means blood. So anytime you see hemat, it's referring to your blood. In hematology reports, hematoxical um, reports saying that there's toxins in the blood. The suffix is the word ending. So in foundation, the root word is found and the suffix is ation. Ation meaning an action. You have taken action upon what you found. The suffix ology means process of study. So when you see a hematology report in a developing nation, they are in the process of studying blood. The combining vowel, usually O, hemat, O, and then logi. Logi is the process of study. Hemat is blood, and then the vowel, O, connects it, as in the term above, links the root to the suffix, or the root, to another root. Combining vowel has no meaning of its own. It joins one word part to another. It is useful to read the meaning of medical terms starting from the suffix, and then going back to the beginning of the term. Remember, I told everybody everything's backwards. And I've told you many times, read things backwards. Find out if it says the same thing backwards as you think it says forwards. If it doesn't, it might likely be a lie. Thus, the term hematology means process of studying of blood. Period. And we'll see this uh, when I get to the computer. Anyway, like I said, I'll take a picture of that and post that to the post when I'm done. And then I'm going to show you some interesting books that I just recently picked up. I can't believe I got these for free. Somebody had them laying on a table across the street because they're moving. Had a garage sale. And they did not sell. So people weren't willing to pay for this knowledge. But given away free, they still 
didn't want this knowledge. It wasn't until I went over there a week later to check it and found out what was left, and I thought, oh, my God, I can't believe this. This is the ad man. Ask for and expect immediate results. This is, a, this this is in context to making contracts. In the eyes of both, equal consideration, equal benefit. And it tells you about the construction of yourself and your intent in wanting to reach a specific goal. Today, in modern times, usually commercial contracts. But this is a very important guide to be able to use in your own construct, whether you want to use it for contracts or trade and barter. I, again, these are books I just picked up, so I have not had time to read these. But I can tell you, That being the admin and what I have re uh, read of it so far tells you that it's a construct of uh, contracts. This one here is 40 studies that changed psychology. Remember, these people are medical practitioners. Practition. Practice. Isn't that synonymous with experimenting? Isn't that synonymous with studies? Uh-huh. Think about this, people, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later in regards to the Nuremberg Code. So again, I have not read that, but I will. Another one here is Psychology in Everyday Life. This is the second edition by David G. Myers, and it comes with a nice study guide, so you can go back and review. It's gonna it's got all kinds of questions and stuff that you may not have thought about, so you can go back and review it. Emergency Care, 12th edition by Brady. Daniel Limmer, Michael F. O'Keefe, medical editor. Guess what? And that's a real nice thick book there. That's almost three fingers wide there. That's almost like a King James Version of the Bible, folks. Look at that. And guess what? We have a workbook on that as well. So again, we're going to be able to go back and do some review some questions that I may not have thought about. And that's why I say, there, that's almost like a King Oops. James Version of the Bible, folks. Oops. Okay. So, this is why I try to stress to people it's very important. Instead of making allegations, accusations, statements, comments, that we ask questions. That we question everything. Because without it, hey, Brother Andy Wordsmith, greetings, brother. I was just talking about you. I can't wait to get that Bible. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. I posted it on your on SPLS. But this is, this is a uh, rough draft of my own book, Etymologically Bible. Um, claim of life, my own claim of life, making a claim within in regards to five other American national brothers that were kidnapped and separated through these medical terms and concerns. And so hopefully this Bible here will help rectify that and put them in their true place of origin. Can't wait to get it. Um, everybody say hi to Andy Wordsmith. Great brother, great brother. Check him out. And in the meantime, back to uh, my thing here. Question everything, folks. Question everything. And here, we're going to switch back to the camera view because I am going to go to the laptop. As you can see, we've got the current video that I'm on right now. And that's only because I've got bad internet here and we're having disconnect issues. Hopefully it's resolved, but... We're going to start out with the oath. Because all these, all these people in the legal profession, in the government, um, in any kind of administration and businesses and medical societies, they all have to take an oath. Every last one of them has to take an oath. Okay? And the origin of the oath is not from another man. Period.
Hopefully everybody can read this. But I'm going to go down here and I'm going to start with Matthew 23 verses 18 through 22. And it says, And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Who places a gift upon an altar but another man? So if you swear an oath by another man, you're guilty. 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 Ye fools and blind, for whatever is, or for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. If you accept a gift from, from another man, it better be his gift from God so that it's not placed upon an altar, but given to you. If he first places upon an altar, whether it be in a church, even today's society of churches operate under UCC, um, not-for-profit not organizations. So their altar is not actually a gift from God. Their altar is accepting that they have to bow down to a commercial system in order for them to be able to gift anything. That is inherently wrong. They are guilty already. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Whoso, there, whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. Thereon or therein. And he shall that swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that setteth thereon. Where is your oath? Is it only within yourself? Is it on somebody else? Does it come on, on an altar from somebody else? Or do you accept it directly from God? Because see, he or it or whatever your concept of God is, your higher power, our Father within, within heaven, the source, the source of love and life, that is the oath that was first given. In beginning was word and the word was with God and the word was God. And we're going to find that here. <clears throat> but above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and nay, and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemn condemnation. And that's James 5, verses 12. Numbers verse 30, or Numbers chapter 30, verse 2, If a man vows a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He sh shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. In regards to these contracts, again, in both eyes, equal consideration, equal benefit, if that word is broken by either one of them, you cannot perform a contract with them. Period. They are guilty. Or you are guilty. Deuteronomy 23, 21 through 23. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For thy Lord God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering. This is regarding what we are freely given in prosperity and abundance. The equal consideration and equal benefit that we are to give freely what we are freely given. 
The equal consideration is what is freely given. The equal benefit is that we give freely. According as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Hebrews 6, 13. Pay attention, people. For when God made promise to Abraham, whom he renamed Abraham, from Abram, the new covenant, because he could swear by no greater, for there is no greater than he, he swear by himself. This is why we are not to swear upon God. He already made the swear upon himself. Hebrews 6, verse 17, wherein God, willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. People, God made the oath. God made the oath, and you are to accept his oath, not the oath of any other. The only time you should accept the oath of another is if in both eyes, yours and his, they have accepted God's oath of his counsel, and you need not an attorney. Period. You need others that have the same within your eyes of equity that can, can, count, that can counsel and confirm it by his oath. Period. Otherwise, they are guilty. 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 Hebrews 7 verse 28, For the law maketh men high priests of which have infirmity. But the word of the oath which has since been the law, since the law maketh the son, who is cons consecrated evermore. So when they talk about law, they better be talking about the oath. Not some written oath from somebody else. Period. When we talk about these oaths, and everybody's concerned about the judge's oath, or the administrator's oath, or this oath, or that oath. Let me pay, let me help you folks pe uh, figure out in this developing nation, with a Senate and a House that confer together for the Congress as a whole. The House, any bill instituted through the House first, is a monetary bill in regards to legislated words. <coughs> Anything instituted through the Senate is supposed to derive from the law, not commerce. And that Senate is held, or that oath is held in the United States Senate, the Senate House. It must first pass in the Senate and then go to the House of Representatives. And then if the House of Representatives passes it, it goes to Congress for confirmation. If it starts in the House, it is not anything to do with law at all. Period. They are guilty. 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 The oath, it says, I do solemnly swear. Already the Senate has made a swearing instead of accepting the oath that is already put upon us. The very first word of the oath is I. It is singular, saying that it comes from their temple and not from heaven. The oath of office of the Senate should start out with the oath given unto us by God. I accept and will support and defend under the Constitution of the United States. This entire thing starting out is wrong and proves guilty. Guilty! Guilty! So again, anything coming out of the Senate is guilty! 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 In my humble opinion. The Hippocratic Oath in accordance to the physicians. I swear again, guilty, guilty, guilty.
by Apollo the physician. And yet they call themselves doctors and get upset when you call them physicians. Period. We're going to go into this one a little bit deeper because in these modern times with coronavirus, I swear, and it says, uh, I swear by Apollo the physician and Asclepius and Hygieia and Panacea and all the gods and goddesses as my witnesses, that according to my ability and judgment, his ability and his judgment, he's already discluded the ability and the judgment of God. I will keep this oath and this contract, showing that he is in a commercial contract and is not. He is converted right there to a contract. That's why they insist that you call them doctors. To hold him who taught me. Where do they get their degree? This art equally Dear to me as my parents. Parents, a commercial term. To be a partner in life with him. Him is not capitalized. And to fulfill his needs. Not capitalized. When required. If you take his oath, if you accept his oath, then it is always required. And if you relinquish that, that, that oath, then you no longer take him as requirement, and you go by contract in the eyes of others that understand that same contract. To look upon his offering as equals to my own siblings. Bullshit. Equals in the lies. And to teach them the lies, this art, the lies of this art, if they shall wish to learn it, without fee or contract. They took a contract to perform contractually, and yet they're stating that they'll do so without fee or contract. Are they babbling people? And that by the set rules. And not by his oath. And by the set rules, lectures, and every other mode of instruction. Not by his oath. I will impart a knowledge. Not his knowledge. I will impart not import, take in, part. They are taking in part a knowledge, not the full knowledge. They are not importing his knowledge. Of the art to my own sons. Therefore, Hosea 4, verse 6, I, if you deny me, I shall deny your, your sons. This is why I do not go to doctors. I do not go to physicians. Even if they call themselves physicians, they have taken an oath to be a doctor. And those of my teachers, and they took upon that knowledge through teachers that took that same oath. And to students bound by this contract, again, without fear contract, and yet they're having students bound by this contract. And having sworn this oath, and not his oath, to the law of medicine, and not the law of love and life, but to no others. So you see, folks, they are without standing. Period. 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 They are guilty, guilty, guilty. Again, in my humble opinion, I will use those dietary regimens which will benefit my patients. 
Sure, they'll benefit. Then why do you charge them? As, answer me that question, folks. Why are we being charged? Are we students? Or are we patients? According to my greatest ability in judgment, and not to God's greatest ability in judgment. Again, proving that they have separated from his oath. I will not give a lethal drug to anyone if I am asked. <clears throat> I will not give a lethal drug to anyone if I am asked. Think about that, people. They know the side effects of all these designed, fashionable, synthetic drugs have lethality. Period. And if they don't know that it could possibly be lethal to you, then how can they promise that they will not give a lethal drug to anyone if they are asked? You ask them, and they know that it can be lethal, but they don't know that it could, that it will be lethal to you. They don't know the outcome. But it may still be lethal, yet they prescribe it. Why? Because they're contradicting themselves. They are lying. Nor will I advise such a plan, knowing that it can be lethal. They give it to you anyway. And similarly, I will not give a woman a pessary to cause an abortion under their Hippocratic oath and because of the misconstruing of Wade versus Roe. Guess what, folks? They violate their Hippocratic oath and it doesn't matter because they have already violated way up at the beginning in the very first word when it says I. In purity and according to divine law, I will carry out my life and my art. In purity and according to divine law, will. I. I. I is the guilty party. That's a person. And I say I a lot because I'm still indoctrinated. But here soon you're going to hear me change into uh, like Brian Watkins does. Keith says so-and-so. Keith says this. I will refer to myself in second, second character showing that I recognize the calling. Keith. I will not use the knife even upon those suffering from stones, but I will leave this to those who are trained in this art. I will not use the knife, even upon those suffering from stones, but I will leave this to those who are trained in this craft. Remember we talked about who taught them? Did God teach anybody to use a knife or any, kind, any other kind of implement? of destroying a temple that he created in any manner? Did he say, cherish the temple? Do not desecrate the temple? Do you know what temple he's talking about? These doctors, these physicians, they're destroying the temple. That's all they do. They're destroying the temple in order to develop a nation. The rest of it, I'm not going to bother to read. You guys can read it. But it says, translated by Michael North, National Library of Medicine, 2002.
here briefly. I'm going to talk about the original statement made at the fine at the uh, <laughs> yeah at the financial institution. There we go. I'm going to talk about the original statement made at the financial institution under military jurisdiction called a hospital with all kinds of wards, particularly infant wards. <coughs> that statement is a debt statement. The problem is that no matter how mom saw it, it didn't make a difference. Because in their eyes, they saw it differently. And so the eyes weren't equal. They are the naked ones. This is why I say nothing in commerce is true. Nothing. It is all fraud and fiction from the very origins. Every last one of those doctor, physicians, physician doctors, nurses, all of them are getting compensated under a contract and not freely given what was given freely to them. Because if they were, no one freely gave them a knife to open up another man for any reason. They, if they were given a knife, it was to open up food sources. Filet fish. Birds. Things like that. And those eyes that they see in, while we try to find out, where do I start? You're already in it. It was already started. It was started eons ago when they started misconstruing the words. Well, how do I get back to them? Who are you? Who are you here? See, I said the other day, people don't realize this, but your, your heart has a mind of its own. Literally. And even these medical people will tell you that. Because through their research... And they're practicing by experimenting through their studies. They have found out that there are brain cells in the heart. Well, what would brain cells be doing in the heart? That's where your true intent comes from. And it's through their indoctrination of putting all this word information up here and forgetting to teach this brain the truth of the words that they're implanting. We've all lost the origins of a self. So, No, Saul, that would be me as well. You'll notice the slight change in the, in the uh, uh, style of the uh, wording there. Keith um, actually is spelled K-E-I-T-H, and then, of course, little is L-E-L, -L, or L-E, lowercase. So the, the new profile name is just a backup so I can start authentication. So you will see, I will, I will eventually, like I said, referring to myself, um, Keith will start putting information on Keith Lit L's page to help separate my past research from my new knowledge and assertion of that knowledge. That's why it's, it's actually a backup. Hey, Sovereign, welcome, brother. I'm glad you're up. Um, I know it's late for you guys, and I'm hoping I'll finish up here shortly. But uh, thanks for joining. Um, everybody else sending out some waves right now. Um, checking comments because we're going to start getting into some definitions that they put out on the internet. Um, in regards to a couple other things and uh, finances and cash.
Okay. Now, um, in regards to... Hold on. Excuse my break. Heavenly sacraments freely given in abundance and prosperity. Um, most of the time, when I look up any kind of um, definition in regards to finances, I like using um, Investopedia because that's the one that um, a lot of your, most generally your um, bankers and corporate people that are performing the, the contracts um, use these particular definitions. And it says, what is a financial statement? Well, that very first statement at that financial institution under military operation known as a hospital is a financial inst inst uh, statement. It is the original financing statement. And not a one of them. Particularly when it's being forced upon people. And they're kidnapping people's children. Because they refuse to fi uh, deal with this financial statement. And it's lies. Proves that it is a lie. It is the very foundation of the lie. Of all commerce. In developing nations that are supposedly looking out for the health and welfare of the nationals through a social security insurance program. And it's all false. Every last bit of it. Financial statements are written records that convey business activities. Not religious period and the financial performance of a company that original statement is in fact a financial statement for the financial performance of a company under contract through Hippocratic oaths Hippocratic, doesn't that sound like hypocrite? Think about it, people. Financial statements are often audited by government agencies, accountants, firms, etc. to ensure accuracy and for tax. Tax. Every commercial performance is a taxable event. Let me ask you people. If anybody's gotten a forensic audit done by the IRS, has that audit ever, ever, ever brought up the hospital statement of live birth? wherein the finance was initially instituted. I'd like to see a forensic accounting with the hospital statement of life birth. I don't know that it can reach the hospital statement of life birth because the hospital statement of life birth is missing an element from there to the certificate of life birth. It's called the book of life. This is the book that the doctor puts down a name. The name that he puts down in the book is not the given Christian calling of Keith Orland. But rather, in fact, it is the commercial name already established of the mother, commercial term, and the father, commercial term, the parents, commercial term, of 
Baby Boy Little. It has no given Christian calling. Keith hyphen Orland. Even though they knew that name, they put it down as Baby Boy Little. In these IRS forensic audits, do they bring that through? Proving that even in the forensic audits of the IRS, they are still committing fraud because they know at some time in the future, if you make a mistake and enter into a commercial contract somewhere, you still don't have proof. They can still try to get you bound into that contract. Just like they did all these doctors that don't understand the oath that God has already provided. And if they already accepted that oath and then take upon a Hippocratic oath that was written by another man that starts out with I. Then they too have already been confused. Even though they believe that they are walking the life of Christ, they are not. And if you cannot see that through your eyes, your eyes are not seeing the lies and therefore your eyes are lying too. Okay, on to the next and final part. In regards to today, today's society, again, um, Investopedia, you see? And it says, what is cash? Cash is legal tender. Currency or coin that can be used to exchange goods. Debt. Or services. Sometimes it also includes the value of assets that can be easily converted into cash immediately as reported by a company. So we see this entire term has to do with companies. So I'm going to help explain this interpret this in my opinion cash is legal tender whereas in barter and trade the lawful exchange can be currency or a coin in exchange for goods debts or services but it can be not just the value of the assets but it can be the actual asset and in fact, it should be the actual asset because anything done in regards to being used to exchange would be referencing a promissory note. A note of promise. That today, I will gladly accept a hamburger today in exchange for payment of two hamburgers on Tuesday. You understand what he exchanged? He exchanged an asset of one hamburger today for the exchange of the value of two hamburgers on Tuesday. So Tuesday, he goes in and he exchanges the value of two hamburgers for the hamburger that he already got. So now if he wants another hamburger, he can't say, well, you owe me two hamburgers. And I promise to pay you for two hamburgers Tuesday. It doesn't work that way, folks. In this commercial value, uh, this commercial system of value of assets, if you promised him value of um, two assets, uh, uh, the value of, of double the asset, that they are providing today on Tuesday, when you go back in Tuesday and provide him the value of both those assets, he now expects for two, two hamburgers today, he wants four, the value of four assets next Tuesday. Again, doubling the incurrence of the original exchange. It is forevermore an increasing of debt by exchanging value of assets which in this commercial system through companies uses a partial value 
without disclosing the actual value of your asset that you're exchanging because they have you exchanging through their company Federal Reserve notes instead of coins of substance. Federal Reserve notes are currency and coins in currency are actual valuable substance. This is why they are removing coins out of circulation. Unless you realize your assets and use them instead of their currency, you are going to be forever stuck in their financial debt. Period. Okay, does everybody understand that? I hope so. I'm going to scroll through and see if uh, anybody's got any questions here. And if you do, um, at least go back to the beginning of the video if you joined late and rewatch. Um, because it's important. It's very important to get back to the origins. And if you're asking, well, where do I start? You have to realize the start isn't their origin. The start is your origin. Where did you come from? Did you come from a legal system that puts out military names in the style of Little Keith Orland or a commercial name known as first, middle, and last? No matter how, uh, how else they otherwise describe it or stylize it or manualize it. Is it manual? Or scriptural? That was already prescribed. Why are these doctors prescribing medicines when the truth of the abundance that earth offers freely, freely given? How can they prescribe that when it was already prescribed? According to scripture, if you listen to scripture, you will not take upon their prescription. You will not take upon the legal description. The taking away of scripture. That is the origin. That's where you start. You started long before you were twinkling your mom and dad's eye. You started before your mom and dad were twinkling their mom's and dad's eyes. You have a legacy. And that's where it comes from. In beginning. He created all. The good and the bad. So that little mind heart. If it's been. A constant illusion. As Adam says. Through their, indo their indoctrination and program. Propaganda. Of the public education system has filled this thing with all kinds of legal, medical descriptions, and your heart has never been taught the scripture, then the prescriptions and descriptions here are false. Yes, fund fundamentally wrong fund a mentality are they funding your mentality uh-huh uh-huh is your fund that of heaven the treasures of heaven isn't that where your mentality should be it is your heart has its own mind and that is fundamental period Correct, Kim J. Heberman. Informant, correct. Information. Again, like I said, look up two dash, uh, UCC 2-206. And it says, offer and acceptance. In capital F, O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N. It is two separate distinct word terms. It is not information, it's information. 
And so when mom signs that as informant, she is signing saying that she is giving details, detail, detail, every man has a tail, and the tail is his origin. It is what he sits on, his sacrament, the holy bone. And it tails up to here. And nothing in here extends anywhere else but from here. Look up the holy bone. And see what they call it. And take a look at the picture of the bone and see why they call it the holy bone. It's got a bunch of holes in it. And so they call it the holy bone. It is from where you stand. Without that holy bone, nothing else matters. It is where you stand. It is what you stand. And it is when you stand. It is why you stand. And it is how you stand. But if you're going to sit on your ass and listen to everybody else instead of yourself and what is in your heart, that is the confusion. That's why I refuse to listen to anybody else. I appreciate the fact that Lotus stood up. I hate it that she's in jail. But she's the one that caused the disturbance. If she can't understand that, that's on her. She's the one that tried to use their law so enforceably against them without using the scripture to rebut it all and going about doing that peacefully. When I go out in public and they need some kind of mask right now or mask or shield and right now this is what I use for their interpretation of a mask or shield. I can also use this beautifully, freely given, God, healthy hair. As a shield. And there's not a damn thing they can do it about it except try to deny it. It does, in fact, shield my face, does it not? When they say mask, can't I just go out to a costume shop and get me some paste and put it on my mask or on my face? Isn't that what women do at night with their facial creams? Don't they put on a face mask? Why are you listening to these idiots? So as you can see, he gives us both, love and anger. And you can put that anger out in the right forum. And you people can see my anger here, but it, does it disturb you? I hope not. If it does, you have the option to just leave and go somewhere else. Ba block me. I don't care. You can't block me from him. So having said that, my own private verse for my body, Hotep second one, chapter one, verse one, he guides Verse 2, he protects me. Verse 2, I shall not waver. Armor. 
the full armor of God. Armor being love. The full love of God is what protects you. He's the one that gives you the, the helmet of salvation and allows you to wear the breastplate plate of righteousness, cinching it up with the belt of truth. So you can shield off all offenders with the, with the shield of truth or the shield of faith and attack if need be with the sword of His Word. As you tra travel in the, gospel, in the boots of His Gospel, soldiering in your coming in and going out of, that only He grants to spread His love. And that's it. If you abide by anything else, then you've taken your abode. Your abode. What is abode? Anybody, quick, look it up. Entomology. B O D E. B O D E. Proclaim, announce, announce beforehand, foretell, messenger, be aware, make aware. What is your boat? What is your awareness? What is your message? Is it a legal message? Is it a medical message? Is it a spiritual message? Is it a manual message? What kind of message is it? Where does it come from? Is it an educational message? Is it a knowledge message? Is it a message of wisdom? Is it a message of love? This is where you start, people. Four years ago, I knew I had to get back to my origins. I knew what they were doing was wrong. And actually, it extends much farther back than four years ago. I just didn't know what, was, what I could do about it. And so therefore, just like everybody else, I just sat in my cognitive dissonance. But four years ago, I really got fucking tired of it. I really got fucking tired of it. So I quit. And I started standing up. And the, in reference to Lotus... And other people on my, on my page here, I've had to, you know, if you don't like my bluntness, my apologies. But it's done in love and not to belittle anybody. I just want you to face up to the truth and be aware of what you're actually doing. Because if you can't go out there and just peacefully bypass their bullshit about masks and shields... By finding a conscionable way of being blatantly just fine with it and agreeing with their terms of mask or shield, you should be able to come up with something. And I can't wait till I find one that says, it's all white and it says, our Father which art in heaven. Because see, I can see through this just fine. It's real nice and light and I can see everywhere I go. I can read the words on the screen. Yeah, this does just fine. And not a one of them can have a problem with it because it fits their description. Why would you argue with that? Find the solution in yourself, not them. Don't argue them and make them try to give you a solution through their legislative word. That They're going to do nothing but come back to you with a fucking lie. Lie after lie after lie after lie. So I'm urging everybody. Get back to your origins. And write your own damn Bible. Make sure it's true. Make sure nobody can rebut it. By using your head. 
This one's only 75 pages. And this, in fact, is, like I said, in consideration of my brothers and sisters known as American Nationals that were kidnapped, imprisoned, hunted down, defamed as fugitives because they believe in the Word of God. How dare you? And this is why it's so important to quit. And again, like I said, I know most of you can't do what I did and just quit. Most of you have other people that are dependent upon you, so you have to slowly continue in the cognitive dissonance system by removing yourself slowly, one thing at a time. Prove that you can educate your own children at home. Prove that you can take care of your own diet and health. Know thyself. Heal thyself. That's where healthy comes from. Again, they've misconstrued the word saying that the medical practitioners and doctors will help you be healthy. No, you need to heal thyself by knowing thyself. Honor thy father. Honor thy mother. Who is thy mother? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Earth is your mother. Earth is where everything is born. We are cast of the soil of the land, born of the water, and given the breath of life. Why would you give that up in any sense? So if that's truly what you want, if you truly want to breathe, be alive, be aware, and breathe. You have it in you, each and every last one of you. I put up a, a, a code here recently, one that I particularly used in my own Bible. To help them understand there are differences in languages. And I will point it out. And I will do so in any court. But if you look at that code. Why is it? That so many people give up right away and say well I can't read that. Yet they believe you can read. You believe you can read prescription. You believe you can read their legal documents. Why? Why? That code I put up, you can read it if you just put your effort into it. You can learn anything you want as long as it's in your heart to find the truth. It's when you say, I can't, that you've already given up the truth. You've already given up yourself. I'm no greater than you and you're no greater than me. We are equal in equity under the, in the eyes of God. And I do my best to treat everybody the same. And if any time you think I'm belittling you, I appreciate you telling me that. Of all input, of all input, whether it be complaints, concerns, comments, or compliments. It's the complaints I need the most. Because it's when you complain about how I present myself that I'm able to see what others see in me that I may not see. And then I can take a look and say, okay, well, you're right. If not, if I do look at myself and I don't see where I'm belittling you, I'm going to ask again, where do you see that I'm belittling you? So yeah, I do need your input. And you do need the input of others. But inherently, you need to find out if it's true within you and if the eyes are seeing the same. If they're not, somebody's lying. Somebody's lying and they are guilty. Guilty. Guilty!
Now, even though they're guilty, doesn't mean they committed some, quote, crime. I don't know if I've ever seen the word crime in the Bible. See, crimes and contracts aren't in the Bible. No legislated word is in the Bible. So even what we call today high crimes, they're not real. They're only a way for us to be able to follow certain manuals, to enforce those manuals, against those that abuse those manuals. Now, if they're using those manuals and they're doing so without his oath, even if they're using those manuals, that's an abuse of me. You can't use that manual against me. This is my manual. I wrote this. And if you don't care to read it and become aware of my origin... That's on you. You're the one that's lying. Because I refuse to believe you because I've already pointed out the lies right here. Can't wait to show you guys the results of this. It'll be a while yet. We know how these things work. So it could be years. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that when I send this off, the right person in its final form, the right person will read this. Read this once and say, yes, he's correct. Remove those people from that custody immediately. They are free children of our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in earth as it is in heaven. We are free in heaven. We are free in earth. Anyway, I appreciate everybody watching. Like I said, this is going to be a video of all videos. I hope you guys share it. I think I've put in enough context uh, information that it will help a lot of people in a very great degree in order to find out where you need to start is by going back to your true origins and using your heart mind to determine what is real and what is fiction. In the meantime, I'm going to post my PayPal link in my other forums. And I ask, please, hit that PayPal link. I really need some help. But don't let that bother you. If you don't, I'm going to keep doing this. I told you, I already quit the commercial system and their legal bullshit. However... I operate under a uh, doctrine of necessity, and in, th in this society, there are a lot of places where I still need a mask that I can't provide a mask. In other words, there are a lot of places that still need some kind of financial instru instrument in order to make an exchange, because I don't have the assets to exchange for Federal Reserve notes to then turn around and buy something in another fictional exchange. So, with that, I do ask, I need some help. In the meantime, remember, if it weren't for you people, I wouldn't be doing this. God bless you. I love you all.